What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple on this Thanksgiving break, plus the winners of our spec case giveaway. Now let's get to the show, and it's now official. Apple has acquired PrimeSense, the company behind Microsoft's Connect Motion Sensor, for reportedly around $345 million. Now, Apple reps confirmed the deal to CNET, and this is exciting because we all know how this could play out with the Apple TV, but it goes beyond that. PrimeSense's newest 3D sensor is called the Capri, not those Capris, and it's a system on a chip that's small enough to be incorporated into mobile devices like phones, tablets, laptops, and more. And I don't anticipate us to be playing something like Dance Central on an iPad anytime soon, even if I want to. Now, their technology can also be used in 3D scanners like this one called Sense by 3D Systems to create accurate 360 degree scans of real world objects that can then be printed. Apple acquired Authentic and their fingerprint sensor back in July of 2012, and Touch ID on the iPhone 5S was the first implementation of it. Prime Sense's tech will also take time to incorporate, but I'm pretty excited to see how Apple will bring some new innovation from this to their new product lines. Now, we've also talked about how Touch ID could potentially open the floodgates for mobile payments in the past. We're still far behind in the US, but a job posting shows Apple is looking for a payment software engineer that will help build a next generation payment platform that will push the boundaries in new markets for Apple retail. Big words, I know, but NFC payments are still clunky here, and there have been recent reports about Apple installing iBeacons into their stores so that you will get information delivered to your phone based on your location in the store since it will know what's on the shelf you're looking at because that's not creepy at all iBeacons could be part of this next generation payment system Apple is hiring for. I want my phone to be a true easy to use digital wallet, but we'll see how it all comes together. Now let's check out some Apple patents and a new revelation from website Unwired View shows Apple's plans to give the Touch ID button trackpad capabilities. For example, you could pan over a map that's displayed on a screen by swiping in any direction over the Touch ID sensor. It can even detect revolving your fingertip around the Touch ID button versus twisting it. And yes, I'm still talking about Touch ID, but just think of it as taking the home button to the next level to be used for navigation or different functions based on gestures with its 500 DPI resolution for detection. And that's some real cool stuff. Now, a recent patent was also awarded to the Big A for a refocusable camera with light field technology that could be used in a device like an iPhone. Now, if light field technology sounds familiar, the Lytro camera might ring a bell that allows you to refocus an image taken after it's been shot. Apple mentions the Lytro as prior art in the patent, but also states its own micro lens array can produce higher quality images because of a higher spatial resolution. The patent also allows Apple to pursue this either with a standalone product or within a mobile device. And I know I could use this on my phone because it seems like every stranger that takes a picture for me takes horrible pictures. All right, let's hit some quick bites and follow-ups. We talked about the large screen 12.9 inch iPad that's rumored to already be in production last week. Digitimes is now reporting that Quanta Computer has landed its own contract with Apple to mass produce the tablet for the second half of 2014. And Quanta is also competing for iWatch production orders that's being targeted for a second quarter 2014 launch, according to the report. Also, the recent introduction of new 27-inch and 32-inch 4K displays from AU Optronics have sparked speculation that these could be the displays used for Apple's next Thunderbolt display with the new Mac Pro coming in December. Now, onlookers have been waiting for any technology that would even allow the Big A to offer a 4K display alongside the Mac Pro, but again, we'll keep following this. And finally, a great story benefiting Product Red. We've talked about how Apple's own Johnny Ive and designer Mark Newsom worked together to create several one-of-a-kind products to benefit Product Red. Their all-red Mac Pro sold for $977,000, with the desktop originally estimated to sell at $60,000. And, you know, it looks really cool if you slap a Coca-Cola logo on it. Then, the all-gold Apple EarPods sold for $461,000, and I just missed the winning bid by $460,999. And their special edition Leica camera we showcased sold for $1,000,000, $805,000, and that's why they call it one of a kind. All right, let's get to the winners of our spec case giveaway last week. I asked you to tell me what time is way past my bedtime, and the correct answer was 12.01 a.m. I'm telling you, all this, this isn't an accident. So congrats go to our Twitter winners, Fernando or at SoOfficialTrey underscore. 
And Patty Kenyon, who says, 12.01 a.m. is past my bedtime, too, because I'm already dreaming about next week's Apple Bite. All right, I'm a sucker for that one. And our email winners, Sylvia Parks, Randy Chang, and Eduardo Lopez, who asked, how do you manage to stick the cases to your nipples like that? Eduardo, it's magic. So congrats to all of you, and I'll be in touch. And if you didn't win, Spec is doing a 10% discount off everything on their online store with the code CNET-SPEC. That's good until December the 8th. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send me your deepest thoughts to the Applebyte at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong if it fits in 140 characters. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time for another bite of the apple.